Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to Baby Library. It's your girl Lisa and today we're gonna watch me reading a love song for Ricky Wilde by Tia Williams for 24 hours. <laughs> Okay, it is time for my first check-in for this weekend reading vlog. I am currently reading A Love Song for Ricky Wilde by Tia Williams. This comes out on Tuesday, February 6th. And I am currently living, laughing, and loving. Like this is the best way to possibly start off my Black History Month, simply because this is everything that I've been looking for. I have been in historical fiction mood and this book is definitely set in a historical fiction era. It is focusing on two timelines. It is focusing on present day, so February 2024, but also has flashbacks in a time frame of the Harlem Renaissance. So you've got anything from 1919, you start off and you're going into 1927, and I'm not sure how far it goes into it, but we're kicking it off in the Roaring Twenties, which as you all may or may not know, the Harlem Renaissance was a peak era for Black people to thrive in New York. So you get a lot of sell settings. Um, I personally believe that the Spotify playlist for this, if there is one, is fantastic because you have songs that are mentioned related to Bessie Williams. You get to know about Duke Ellington. She references Madam C.J. Walker. You get so much historical context in this that if you are not familiar with the Black experience, if you're not familiar with our Black history, this will put you in a mood to search and fact find. Tia did her research. Like I am in here like resonating with this. This is so enriched in Black culture. Like this talks about the universal experience. Like we all know Black grandmas definitely have Lifesavers and Werther's Originals in their bag. And her mentioning that just really, you know, set off something in my brain that was nostalgic. I will say that I am currently loving the magical realism. I am loving the historical settings. I am also intrigued, but please know that this will also have some heavier context. Like Tia Williams did not shy away from the important things that you need to know. There's content warning related to grief and loss of a family. It is a uh, content warning in relation to a mass murder. It, it talks about how people cope with living after their loved ones have been gone um, in the form of drugs. So please know that this has some heavier contents, but it is so enriching and soothing to my soul. Tia Williams is definitely painting a couple of different pictures. One thing is the idea of how people show up in their families and how you can be the black sheep. Our female main character, Ricky, was the fact that she is eccentric um, and she is beating to her own drum, but she is artistic and she is creative and that is shunned from her family. And I think one thing that is important is knowing that people can show up and be considered smart and gifted and talented in different ways. There is no formula. And so she is trying to buck the tradition of her family, but still is seeking their approval. And I resonated with that so much because this is letting you know Black people are not a monolith and what you desire and your passions really spoke to this particular character. There are so many different connection pieces to this that I am enjoying and loving. So I I have a feeling that this may top uh, Seven Days in June for me. And if it does, I'm going to be screaming Tia Williams' praises from the rooftop because she is on track to be an auto read at least or auto buy author for me. So I'm going to continue reading A Love Song for Ricky Wilds and I'll come back with more information. <laughs> So what I just had to go look up was a person known as Gladys Bentley. This is telling me that Gladys Bentley was a drag king in the 1920s who owned their own underground speakeasy club for LGBTQ plus members to be safe in the 1920s. So again, all of these gems that are being dropped that was unknown to me and may not be known to a lot of others, but that just further lets me know again a few things. Tia Williams done her research. In addition to the fact that 
The LGBT community had been a part of the 1920s Harlem Renaissance era, and they were prominent, and it was just a time for Black excellence in general. One of the things Tia talks about is the fact that you had celebrities there with common folk, and everyone was in the room vibing and having a time and enjoying being Black, being gifted, and being unique in their experience, but loving on each other. And I am so happy that Tia Williams is shedding a light on this, and I hope that everyone picks up this particular gem. And I'm going to keep reading. And let It is 5.30 in the morning, and I am at 61% of a love song for Ricky Wilde, and I just have got to tell y'all, absolutely bananas. And I, oh, Tia Williams, girl, you cemented yourself for me because this is everything, everything, everything. I am currently in Sam's for a tire rotation and I am reading the book and I am at like 94% and I know what's going to happen. If I start crying in Sam's, I'm not going to be able to go out in the public again. So I think that means that I need to stop reading because there's no way I'm not going to cry. There's absolutely no way. I feel it in my spirit. I tried to pick the look back up, y'all. I tried. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna be able to make it. You see the water works already getting formed. T. Williams, count your days, girl. When I see you on 313, it's gonna be me and you, we gonna have a conversation because you got me out here tearing up and getting ready to cry in public and that's not okay. okay so as you can see, I read this. I actually, I devoured it. I'm not even going to say I read it. This happened in 24 hours. I didn't get any sleep. You all saw that I was up at 5.30 in the morning pressing through. When I tell you that T. Williams had me in a chokehold, like I was living, laughing, loving, and fighting for my life because sleep was nowhere to be found. Tia Williams said, you're going to read for 24 hours and you're gonna thank me later and here it is later me thanking her i have since slept i haven't picked up anything else this was actually supposed to be a weekend reading vlog but i had to take my moment bring myself back together because as you saw i was crying in sam's like there is no reason that tia williams has me out here looking bad like that this goes without saying I think that this is my favorite Tia Williams book. Um, so they go actually in order. So my third favorite is going to be The Perfect Fine. My second favorite is going to be Seven Days in June. And then A Love Song for Ricky Wilde is top tier. Like if I were the person to give six star reads, this would be a six star read for me. Like I don't believe in the six star tier because I can't justify it. But if I had a six star tier, this would be it. This is my first five star of 2024 and I don't think that I could have found a better book that was deserving of it like this is the way you kick off Black History Month because the history and the facts were present. Tia Williams as I said earlier has done her research and you all are going to learn so much about Harlem during the Harlem Renaissance. You're going to be immersed into the feelings. Now I will tell you this got me to laugh. Obviously, it got me to cry. It got me thinking. And it got me reminiscing and being in a nostalgic mood. By none, this is the book to pick up if you're looking for Tia Williams' recommendation. Now, a couple of things that I want to make reference to. I talked a lot about our female main character, Ricky, which, again, she was a shining star. But let me also give you a little bit of a synopsis on our main male character, Ezra, better known as Breeze. Ezra, I'm telling you, he is the moment. Like, he is a timeless classic of a man. When I think of Jadena's classic man, this is Ezra. He is a Southern gentleman. He is what we're all looking for. Like, 
I'm not sure if I really want to put him in book boyfriend because he is unobtainable for me, but I loved the way that he loved Ricky. Um, his love no, no leaps and bounds. But I will also tell you, this is a soulmate romance. Like the forced proximity of it all. I'm not going to spoil this because it hasn't even come out yet for everyone. But this is what we mean when we say we're looking for that soulmate type of feel in our books and in our romances. These two got it. Um, I also fell in love with other characters. I fell in love with Tuesday. She was chaotic. But one of the things I will say is Tia is good for chaos. Like everything about this is chaotic, but you don't really understand what's going on until you get to the end of the book and it all kind of falls together. The way that Tia was able to make a full circle moment, like my brain just literally exploded on page because I was like, so you mean to tell me this person is connected to this person who's connected to this point in history, who's connected to this person who full circle goes back to the top? Yes, she did that. Like, I don't know what her writing process is, but it is flawless. There is not a speck of anything that I could say, oh, she forgot about this. Tia Williams caught everything and brought it all together and packaged it up in a lovely bow. I loved how we got to see her interaction of telling us how Ezra amassed his fortune, right? One of the things that we want to talk about is generational wealth. And Ezra did that. I love the way in which she was able to write him as a person that didn't necessarily have education. He did not make it past the sixth grade, but the boy in the... I'm not even gonna call him a boy, but the man is brilliant. The man amassed a wealth of riches, um, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and in actual financial wealth. And we love to see it. Needless to say, oh, I forgot to mention Miss Della. How could I forget Miss Della? She was the icing on the cake, the cherry on top. She is funny, but she is that grandma. Like, I personally have never got to meet my grandma my, or my grandparents passed before I got to meet them. But if I could find a local grandma that was willing to love me and accept me and cherish me and nurture me like Miss Della, I'd be just like Ricky. I'd be so wrapped up and consumed with her. Like, she is perfection. Her bucket list, I was like, there's absolutely no way. There's no way. But let me tell you, Miss Della said, I'm going out with a bang. I'm going to do everything that I've got to do. I have lived up the moment and that is how we want to live our lives. So again, if you are considering whether or not Tia Williams is for you and you want to start off with what I consider is the best, a love song for Ricky Wilde is going to be that. Um, I, again, I still love uh, Seven Days in June and I love The Perfect Fine, but... Sis had a banger with this one. In 2024, this is what I want. I want all the vibes of this for myself, for authors, and for fellow readers. Do me a favor, leave me a music note and or a flower. So leave me some sort of flower emoji and a music note. How about that? Tell me if you've read this book or if you have plans to read this book. And I'll talk to you all next time. Bye.